Hi folks, hope everything is going well for you. I wanted to do a little update on the Lava Me 2 the carbon fiber hybrid guitar from China. I've had it a, l a little longer now and uh, I've discovered a few more things about it that I think are important for you to, to hear. I told you in the earlier video that had some issues uh, with different things and so we'll, we'll get into that. The first thing I want to talk to you about today is kind of important and that is about the sound of the instrument and um, I think it's uh, at, at this particular point in time with carbon fiber guitars um, they don't have the same uh, brightness uh, if you're looking for brightness like I, I see a big difference between for example a Taylor guitar and uh, a Larrabee. My Larrabee is not quite as bright and, and of course depending on what you use your instrument for um, you may want a, a more bright guitar or you might want a less bright guitar. If, if for example you uh, uh, do performance stuff and do a lot of instrumental work and you want things to be alive and sound good that'd be great. If you are a performer, a singer and you would like to treat the guitar as an accompaniment instrument then you'd probably want it to be uh, not quite as bright. You'd want, you wouldn't want it competing with the vocal for example. Um, so uh, one thing I've noticed about uh, the Lava Me 2 is that it's not as bright as uh, other acoustic instruments uh, that are made with wood. Um, I saw a comparison on, on, on YouTube just the other day uh, which I thought was a little a little unfair at least at this point in time uh, it was all wooden instruments comparing with the Lava Me 2 and it was a dramatic difference between uh, the amount of brightness and the, you know, the, uh, um, the wood guitars they were brighter instruments the, the uh, Larrabee was much more subdued um, acoustically now you can compensate for all that by uh, plugging it in and using uh, using an amp you can adjust your uh, brightness controls with an amplifier or a PA system or whatever so but anyway I just wanted to pass along to you that if, if you're looking for a really bright instrument uh, and you're you're not willing to uh, and, and you want it to be a bright instrument acoustically without any amplification uh, you might not be pleased with the Lava Me 2 um, it doesn't bother me I, I like to sing along and and, and play so from a, from a vocalist standpoint, uh, it's a great instrument uh, either way. I just for sitting at home around the house, I love this instrument and that's, that's what I'm, I'm doing now. Is I play it a ton these days, a lot more than I've been playing my other instrument. Um, so that's it, that's it about the sound. Um, the other thing that I've noticed uh, and that is kind of a no-brainer is that it's got a smaller neck so uh, if you find yourself switching back and forth a lot between instruments between your regular guitar a larger instrument and the Lava Me 2 uh, you're gonna find that you're gonna be playing chords uh, on one instrument and your, your fingers aren't gonna fit really well as you make that adjustment once you make the adjustment you're okay but if you if you had been playing your regular size guitar and you and you pick up a, a Lava Me 2 you're going to find you're going to have to there's a little time there where you're going to have to adjust your you know the positioning of your fingers on the chords uh which i mean that's common sense but it's something to be aware of if you're if you're wanting to have a kick around guitar at home like i do uh the lava me too is is great i leave it out of the case all the time it sits up uh, on, a, on a guitar stand and i I'm, it's easy access for me all the time so that's mainly what i play at home uh, when it gets into uh, um, performance on, on the other instrument, uh, there's a little adjustment period there, but I don't think it's uh, a big deal, uh, but it's something to be aware of. Uh, I'm, I'm really enjoying the electronics when I play. A lot of times I'll turn on the electronics. It, it's a little bit louder and, uh, and it's fun because the, the chorusing effect is fun. So I, I generally uh, have the the uh, the electronics turned on 
mostly I've been doing uh, chorus. Uh, I have done some some things in uh, delay, and that's that's kind of fun too. Delay along with uh, reverb is kind of cool. But anyway, uh, so it's fun to play when you're just sitting around playing with those electronics. They do make a difference, and and they uh, just add a little more. Uh, uh, oomph to the instrument, you know, just a little more interest, and uh, it's fun to do, fun to play. Um, the uh, other issue I want to talk about a little bit, I don't have a whole lot of experience on this, but um, I have charged the battery on this once, and um, it comes with a regular uh, cable, and a, there's a, I showed you in a previous video that um, there's a, an input here for your 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 electronic your uh, battery. This is the cord it comes with. Um, just it's just a standard cord, except it's got the mini USB connector on this end, and um, it plugs in here. It's not hard to plug it in. I'm interrupting myself to give you a better explanation about the the light on the on the guitar that shows you how much battery you have. Uh, when it's green, the battery is between 30 and 100 percent. When it gets down to 30 percent, the orange light will be continuous. Uh, between 10 and 30 percent, it'll be continuous. And then when it gets less than 10 percent, the amber light will start flashing. And so when it starts flashing, that, that's the clue that you're about to run out of battery. You got 10 percent left. So they have a pretty good uh, system of uh, warning before your battery goes out. Uh, the only thing that I ran into when I was charging it, I ch I've charged it once since I've had it, is that it, the light never turned green. I had it on the charger for at least two hours, maybe three, and uh, it never turned green. So I don't know if I didn't wait long enough or if it doesn't turn green when it's fully charged. Uh, so anyway, but when I did remove the cable and turned it on, it it uh, it was green. So just just so you know, uh, you may not get a green light when you're charging it. Um, but anyway, that's a little better explanation of how the the battery uh, system gets charged and 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 the warning lights before you're running out of battery. Uh, so I really, I don't have a whole lot of experience with it, but it seems to last a long time. I've had the guitar now for, uh, well over a week and a week and a half, something like that. And, uh, and I've only had to charge it once during that time. So it's pretty, pretty good in that regard. I wish it had, I wish I, I wish I could tell when it was charged, fully charged. And maybe I didn't wait long enough. I don't know, but we'll, uh, uh, if I, if I if I find anything else about that, I'll let you know. But that's all I know at this point. Um, to pick up and play this guitar is just a lot of fun. I mean, I just I leave it sitting up like I told you all the time, and and uh, just around the house, it's it's great to have an instrument you can just pick up and start playing. Uh, so to me, that's important. Now, the the main thing I wanted to talk to you about today was the, the fit of the of the guitar in the case with accessories. Well, uh, since the first video, I was kind of fumbling around trying to make it fit, as you saw if you watched that first video. Uh, I did find what I what I think is a solution to the to the guitar in the case, and that is um, I was trying to go like this. I was trying to bring the back end forward and lay it in and then lay the strap up underneath and and I was trying to to get it to fit underneath on the side and that didn't work very well so uh, I just was messing around with it and oh here's that book maybe I'll get back to that um, what I decided to do and it kind of makes sense because the straps fold flat against the instrument on both sides this way is to just hold it straight up like that with the back showing and then just pull this over and and make it fit on the back just by adjusting what direction you're going and then what I do is I just hold can't see it I just hold it with my thumb here flip it over stick the head in 
and lay it down into the instrument. And that seems to work. There's enough give on the case. The case is flexible. I don't know if you, the case is flexible. So uh, that seemed to work. Now, so I got the strap in. The other thing I was talking about on the first video was the, the, the capo. And I, I used page, a page capo. I don't know what y'all use, but uh, it's kind of a handy gadget. To me, it's, what's handy about it is that you can slide it off the end of the guitar and uh, tighten it down and just off your nut. And it just sits there and it's, not, it's out of the way. Just tighten it down a little bit just to make it snug. And it's out of the way. And then you can just pull it up if you're right in the middle of changing songs or something and you need a capo for the next one. You can just loosen it, bring it up, third fret or whatever, whatever you're doing. And it just works really well that way for me. Um, in the first video, I was wondering if I could get it in. Well, the truth is I, I really can't get it in. So when I lay it down in the case, um, uh, it it hits the inside of the guitar and prevents the the headstock from fully going into the case. So um, I was thinking I would have to to remove it. Well, as things would turn out, I've got a little Daddario uh, tuner. Uh, I've got a couple of these, and it fits right on the headstock. Well, it, it it's it's probably better not to try to leave it on. Um, you can, but I, I just stick it on there and it will fit, um, it will fit in the case kind of, sort of, uh, and then you can, but what I was, what I ended up doing was, uh, getting this little pod, uh, uh air bud case and putting my cord in there if I wanted to carry that around, put it underneath the headstock and lay it in there. And I can even get the cape, the, uh, cape, um, the tuner in that little uh, earbud box um, pad in there and close the case. So it's got enough flexibility so you can close all the way around. And so, okay, so I've, now I've got my strap in I've got my charging cable in, I've got a tuner in, uh, and I've got my capo in. So I could do that, and, and that works good. So if I were to ship it, if I were going on an airplane ride someplace, I would take the, uh, I would take off the, I would take off the capo for sure. And I can put the cable, since it's this particular kind, it's a flat, uh, flat cable, I can put that in this, in this box too. I'd probably put the tuner in there as well. And then put that under there. And for traveling, I'd probably put this in, this in too. Let's see if I can get that in there. It'll fit in kind of in the middle there. Put this in here, close the case over that, and I'm good to go. Where's the other one? Okay, so now I've got, um, I've got my strap in, I've got power, power cord, I've got a tuner, I've got a capo. And I can travel like this. The only problem is this guy here. What am I going to do with this? And, I, and I'm hoping that you will do a couple things. I'm hoping you will uh, please give me feedback on this video. And if, you, if there's anything you found helpful in this video, please give me a, th a thumbs up. I would sure appreciate it. I'm amazed there's, uh, there were quite a few views of this um, last video and not very many likes. So I don't have an idea of what you're thinking of these videos. So 
If you have thoughts about them, please uh, make a comment, and yay or uh, negative or positive, I don't care. I'd, I'd much rather uh, hear from you in, uh, uh, in some way than to not hear from you at all. So please do that. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is uh, the shoulder strap on the back of this instrument. Now, it's great that you can take off this here, you can you can take off the uh, you can't see that. You can take the, the the shoulder strap off, but I guess you'd have to wrap it around the body of the instrument or something. Let's see if we can do that. I don't know. <laughs> but that, that would be kind of screwy anyway, because then you then you have to undo it all to get get in the case. So. Uh, but anyway, I don't, I don't like the fact that this shoulder strap is permanently attached. Um, I, I wish it were all separate. I wish there were these, these straps here all, you know, all the way around so that you could take it off. That's being picky, I guess some people might say, but uh, it's kind of, a, kind of a drag to have to carry this thing around if you don't use the shoulder strap, which I don't use much. Occasionally I, I would, and if I do, I usually just use one side. But anyway, I thought I'd point that out to you. When you get the case, you're going to have this permanent strap, permanent shoulder strap on here, or backpack kind of deal. So anyway, I hope you found some of these uh, uh, thoughts helpful, to, and uh, if you get this guitar, you'll, uh, you'll be a little more aware of what you're getting. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.